Okay, this is the third week, uh, February 8th. This is class number nine. Hey, Irene, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm doing good, and you? I'm pretty well today. Thank you for asking. Great. How was your weekend? Weekend was very nice because I cook. <laughs> oh, what did you cook? Mm, many things because on Saturday I make pupusas. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yesterday uh, I cook uh, yuca with chicharrones. <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> yeah. well, Typical food. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. I like I like cook. Yeah, very delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like what about cook? you? Sorry? Do you like to cook? Yes, I like I like cook. I like very much. I enjoyed it. What do you like cooking the most? Mm, normally typical food, but um some sometimes I cook with a tutorial with YouTube you too. With, with Google. Tutorial, T tutorial. Yes, tutorials on, on tutorial YouTube. with YouTube. Uh huh. Oh. Receipt or YouTube. Uh huh. That's interesting. And yeah. you. <laughs> and Thank you. It's pretty good because you know that's the nice thing about YouTube. You turn on YouTube, you watch the video, you like it, you try. It. Uh -huh. it's, very, it's very easy or it's easier, right? <clears throat> because uh, when I saw that the receipt, is it's easy for me. Okay. All right. Cool. Mario, Daniel, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, hello. How are you guys? How was your weekend? 
very good. I have rest all the weekend. And yeah, this week I have to, to return to the, the platform because <laughs> I didn't practice this weekend. But yeah, I received a message from Gabriela, I think, that he, he told me that I have to, to go into the platform to practice. So yeah, I need to finish the platform maybe this week from because we, we have we have finished the first the the first oh we had to finish the first midterm exam right yeah okay okay yeah yeah next, because next week is the last week yeah i know but yeah the last week was very tough for me from the from my job so but right now i'm i'm totally uh, focus in English class so I probably finished the, the platform excellent excellent and it's not easy believe me that midterm yeah and the time I know Ooh. I know mm -hmm. all right Daniel how about you everything okay yes everything is okay I'm here ready excellent I'm trying to work something platform but uh, I couldn't finish uh, until the midterm so I'm trying to, to do something, maybe today, because tomorrow I will have a, a hard day. Okay. So I don't think so that tomorrow I, I'm trying to be here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to advance in the platform, but w when you have the time, it's advance as much as you can, because whew, <laughs> yes. is hard. I take an advantage the last week, Mm -hmm. uh, so they has uh, helped me because uh, on, on Sunday, maybe, no, today, Sunday and today, I, I couldn't do anything. Sunday, yesterday? Yesterday, yes, I couldn't, I couldn't. Uh, a lot of work or, or what happened? Yes, I have with some issues in my work, but it's normal. Every weekend is the same. <laughs> <laughs> Always is something with work, right? Yes, I'm like a a call center center uh, with uh, how do you say walking call center, walking call center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my phone is ringing every every time. I can imagine all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's, nice. it's different, right? It, this is the good thing that about keeping you busy or keeping you with other things, other activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Rocio, how are you? Fine, fine. Thanks. Fine. Thank you. Good, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Well, how was the... Uh, how was your weekend? What did you do? Mm, uh, I have visit. I have a visit from my parents at home. <laughs> they were in quarantine until now. They visit me. Visit. They were me. in quarantine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. But everything is okay. Yes, everything was okay. Yes. All right, good. Well, this week, um, we are actually beginning part three. This is our third week, and we are looking at the speaking section, okay? So we're going to be looking at our speaking. Um, well, actually, a couple of you already mentioned the platform and the midterm, which is great. Um, I know that it, obviously you, some of you haven't had a chance to finish it, uh, the midterm or complete it, but you know, it's important to try to advance little by little every day, or, you know, try to advance as much as possible on the day that you have time, because it, it does take some time. It is a little bit of thinking and listening carefully and paying attention. Um, this week, we're going to be looking at specifically the speaking section and how the speaking is graded. How, uh, how you get points, uh, how you can increase your vocabulary when you have to talk, these types of things, okay? So 
we're going to start off first with the introduction of the videos of a little bit of information of the organization the questions and what they are and then we're going to go ahead and start looking at doing some of the exercises let's go over the speaking section this is what you will find integrated questions three and five and integrated questions four and six going over each type of questions will help you get better results so stay for the explanation and watch the examples okay so integrated questions means that they're joined that's that's the idea so questions three and five and then questions four and six so here's how three and five are scored and a little bit of information about them your responses are scored and will give you some tips for improving your speaking skills question three five welcome to the speaking section we'll now go over speaking question three and five introduction question structure approach tips a scoring criteria a skill building tips here we're going to look at how the questions are structured and what they're asking how to approach the questions how your responses are scored, and we'll give you some tips for improving your speaking skills. Question three, read a passage, listen to a response, 30 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. Here's generally what the question will look like and how they are structured. In question three, you will read a passage about a campus related topic. Then you will listen to a response to that topic. Then you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Question five, listen to a conversation. 20 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. For question five, you listen to part of a conversation. Then you'll have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Now let's look more closely at what these campus situation questions look like and what they will be asking you to do. For question three, where you have both reading and listening passages, you will be asked what the opinion is of a speaker in the listening passage, and you will need to explain how that person's opinion relates to the issues presented in the reading passage. So, you're essentially summarizing and combining information from two sources. For question five, where the listening passage is a conversation about a campus problem and one or more solutions, you will need to describe the problem and then give your opinion about what the solution should be. Approach tips. Don't speak too quickly. Speak at a normal pace. Time yourself when you practice. How to approach these kind of speaking questions. Number one, be careful not to speak too quickly because this might make it difficult for the reader to understand you. The questions are designed so that if you speak at a normal pace, you will have enough time to give a complete response. You will get better at this if you time yourself when you practice. Question three, listen carefully to the speaker's reason for agreeing or disagreeing with points made in the reading. Make sure you summarize the opinion of the speaker. For question five, as you listen, focus on identifying and understanding what the problem and possible solutions are. Then write down a few keywords or ideas on your scratch paper. But remember, you need to do more than summarizing your response. You also need to give your opinion, so don't spend too much time summarizing. Use most of your time explaining why it is the best solution. A scoring criteria, zero to four. A score holistically. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how the questions are scored. In the speaking section, all six responses are scored on a scale from zero to four, and they are scored holistically, which means that the rater listens for various features in your response and then give it an overall score. Delivery. Clear and fluent speech. Good pronunciation. Natural pace. Good intonation. Language use. Use of grammar and vocabulary to express your ideas. 
Topic development, how fully you answer, how clearly you express your ideas, how you connect ideas. Now, here are some activities that can help you build your skills for integrated speaking tasks, especially numbers three and five about campus situations. Find an online newspaper from an English speaking university. Look for topics about campus life. Choose an article to discuss with a partner. Record yourself and listen to how you speak. Listen to hear your mistakes as well as your tone and pacing. Find listening and reading material on the same topic. Outline a one-minute response, including your opinion and supporting points. Practice improving your fluency. Try to smooth out your phrasing, use different wording, avoid pauses, use transition words, and so on. Okay. So as you can see, there's quite a few tips that are involved um, for questions three and five, okay? We're gonna see the other ones in just a moment, but I wanna make sure that we understood it correctly and we are clear. So what did you learn about questions three and five and how it's graded? Okay, w would you like to watch the video again? Yeah? Yes, please, because it's a lot of information. Yes. But that... maybe the number three is about the read, number five is about listening. Okay. But I'm not sure about the time, 30, 30 seconds for, for what? To prepare? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> No problem, no problem. I, I understand when every when everybody was quiet, I understood. Mm, listen again. <laughs> so let's listen again. Don't worry. Um, we'll we'll try again. If it's not clear, then I'll explain it in other words. Okay. Let's try one more time. Welcome to the speaking section. We'll now go over speaking question three and five. Introduction, question structure, approach tips, scoring criteria, skill building tips. Here we're going to look at how the questions are structured and what they're asking, how to approach the questions, how your responses are scored, and we'll give you some tips for improving your speaking skills. Question three, read a passage, listen to a response, 30 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. Okay, so we are, we're clear in question number three, you have 30 seconds where you have the opportunity to prepare your answer, okay? So you have opportunity to read a passage, read a small article, uh, listen to somebody respond, and then you have 30 seconds to think about what you want to say. Then you have 60 seconds to complete what you're saying. Here's generally what the question will look like and how they're structured. In question three, you will read a passage about a campus-related topic. Then you will listen to a response to that topic. Then you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Question five, listen to a conversation. 20 seconds to prepare. 60 seconds to speak. For question five, you listen to part of a conversation. Then you'll have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Now let's look more closely at what these campus situation questions look like and what they will be asking you to do. For question three, where you have both reading and listening passages, you will be asked what the opinion is of a speaker in the listening passage and you will need to explain how that person's opinion relates to the issues presented in the reading passage. So, you're essentially summarizing and combining information from two sources. For question five, where the listening passage is a conversation about a campus problem and one or more solutions, you will need to describe the problem and then give your opinion about what the solution should be. Approach tips, don't speak too quickly. 
and speak at a normal pace. Time yourself when you practice. How to approach these kind of speaking questions. Number one, be careful not to speak too quickly because this might make it difficult for the reader to understand you. The questions are designed so that if you speak at a normal pace, you will have enough time to give a complete response. You will get better at this if you time yourself when you practice. Question three, listen carefully to the speaker's reason for agreeing or disagreeing with points made in the reading. Make sure you summarize the opinion of the speaker. For question five, as you listen, focus on identifying and understanding what the problem and possible solutions are. Then write down a few keywords or ideas on your scratch paper. But remember, you need to do more than summarizing your response. You also need to give your opinion, so don't spend too much time summarizing. Use most of your time explaining why it is the best solution. A scoring criteria, zero to four. A score holistically. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how the questions are scored. In the speaking section, all six responses are scored on a scale from zero to four, and they are scored holistically, which means that the rater listens for various features in your response and then give it an overall score. Delivery. Clear and fluid speech. Good pronunciation. Natural pace. Good intonation. Okay, just to pause here to make sure that it's clear what each of those means. The delivery is what your answer is. Clear and fluid speech, how you pronounce it, it's the, do you pause, it, do you have commas? That's the idea of the fluid speech. Good pronunciation, obviously, do you say the words appropriately, okay? Natural pace, does, that means the pace is how, the rhythm with which you're saying the words, okay? And the good intonation, do you go up, do you go down, or all of the words in the same form? Some words, if you have a question or your statement, the intonation needs to increase. Sometimes if you have something on contrary, the intonation needs to go down. That's the idea of the good intonation, okay? That's what they're looking for, and that's what you need to be careful for when you're answering. What does natural pace? Use of grammar and vocabulary. Sorry. Uh, what refer the natural pace? Ah, the natural pace is a, the how fast you're speaking, how fast you're saying the words. And the fluid is if you are a, saying the words appropriately without having uh, any mistakes or any parts where we need to interrupt them. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. So you can think of the pace as a like like a music if the music is a fast beat usually is something like uh with the speaker speaking very quickly and if the music is slow then usually the music the speaker is slow so the pace is that how fast or slow you're saying the things vocabulary to express your ideas Topic development, how fully you answer, how clearly you express your ideas, how you connect ideas. Now, here are some activities that can help you build your skills for integrated speaking tasks, especially numbers three and five about campus situations. Find an online newspaper from an English speaking university. Look for topics about campus life. Choose an article to discuss with a partner. Record yourself and listen to how you speak. Listen to hear your mistakes as well as your tone and pacing. Find listening and reading material on the same topic. Outline a one-minute response, including your opinion and supporting points. Practice improving your fluency. Try to smooth out your phrasing, use different wording, avoid pauses, use transition words, and so on. Okay. All right, so let's see, what, what did you understand? What's the idea of questions three and five? What can we do about it? What should we focus on? Whatever you got. Oh, 
Okay. Just that, Erwin, just okay. that, that I said before that uh, maybe we have to, to handle the time uh, before uh, answer something or before to read uh, something, we have to to take us some 30 seconds or 20 seconds, maybe for three or, or five questions. Okay. So that's right. So in those types of questions is really, the idea is that you do have time to prepare and many people don't use that time to prepare. They forget that it's preparing. So how should you prepare? Really in your mind, you should start not saying the not saying exactly what you want to say, but start thinking about the order that you want to speak. You want to begin with the problem, okay? You want to paraphrase what you read. You want to paraphrase what the speaker said, okay? For question number three. For question number five, it's only listening. There is no reading. So only think about how you present it, okay? What was the problem? What was the solution that they gave you? That's the first part. So for both situations for both the tip is say in your own words what you understood from the reading or the listening or both okay explain what they said what was their solution and then that's how you should organize that's the first thing that you should come to your mind okay what did you understand what did they present and then is your idea what you think do you think that's a good solution? You think it's a bad solution? Why do you think it's a good solution? Why do you think it's a bad solution? Give some examples, give some supporting ideas. That's the idea. While you're doing that, the important is to try to maintain fluidity and maintain a good pace. So you don't want to say, um, sometimes people get nervous and they say, well, at the beginning, I, I think that it was, um, um, um about a, a per no that's what you want to, that's what you want to avoid you lose points for that that's the purpose of having the time to present you don't need to think about everything you only need to have the main ideas so that when you're speaking ah okay i want to talk about this number one i want to summarize number two i want to mention the problem number three i want to mention the solution number four i want to explain why number five i want to give examples why okay this is the idea for using those 20 or 30 seconds. It's not like a conversation. It's not like, hey, Mario, how was your weekend? No, oh, it was okay. No, no, no. You need to be organized, structured, because every time you speak, every word that you say is a point, is a point more or a point less. Every time you pause is a deduction. Every time you are fluid is increase your score. And that's where we are not used to because we are not used to people evaluating us. We're not used to that. Okay, Daniel, you have 60 seconds, speak. What, what happened? 10 seconds, you don't speak. What happened? What happened? And then this is the idea, okay? So in order to use it, the best thing is watch your time. Yes, you have 60 seconds. And maybe you think, oh, it's a lot of time. Mm, it's really not. Not what you have to summarize, you have to explain the problems or the solutions. You have to talk about what your point of view is. You have to explain the reasons why and give supporting details. It's not a lot of time. It's going to go very quickly. Okay. Any questions about what to do on three and five? Okay. Also, one of the tips that they give you is specifically if you want to improve those questions, the best is to look for university newspapers, online universities, read about the uh, vocabulary that they have, for example, uh, campus vocabulary, um, you know, the housing situation, the food, cafeterias, different things that are specific for university students, okay? Uh, Irene? Yeah, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah, what is your advice? Uh, which one is your advice when my vocabulary is no enough? Okay. And if suddenly or if some word, what is 
Okay. Well, there's a couple of things. First, uh, to increase your vocabulary, you need to read. Okay. And you need to read specifically about the topic. You already know that the topic is going to be about college life. So you need to read about universities, universities in the US, universities in Canada, universities in uh, you know, Oxford or England, whatever. But the idea is to get an, a good understanding of university. That's going to help you increase your vocabulary. Second, if there is something that you don't remember or you can't think of how to say it, don't say it. Try to explain it with different words. Don't waste the time thinking of the word. Like in Spanish, in a normal conversation, if you say, ah, what's the name of that, that, um, that, uh, that, uh, and you continue, think, don't, because it's not a conversation. It's a grade. It's an evaluation. And because it's an evaluation, you don't have the luxury or you don't have the opportunity to think about, oh, that word, no. Whatever it is that you want to say, if you don't have the word, explain what the word is. Use similes, use antonyms, because it's correct. That's also a correct. So uh, if I want to say is um, the life on campus is opposite to uh, opposite of happy. I don't remember the word, but I know happy and I know that it's opposite. Okay. Or I, is the, 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 the work my, my job is, is the contrary, contrary to easy. Ah, okay. I don't say the word because I don't remember, but I can mention the opposite words that I have. Oh, Irene disappeared, but I think that her question is, is the idea for everyone and it helps everyone for numbers three and five, okay? So reading, yes, increase your vocabulary, but also the, that's why we have the cell phones, right? The cell phones have the voice notes. The cell phones have that, that message. You speak, you record your message, and you can see in the moment, you can see if it's 60 seconds. That's the idea, okay? All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay, perfect. Let's go to the next one. Here's for questions four and six. Let's go over speaking questions four and six. The integrated speaking questions about academic courses. Introduction, question structure, approach tips, scoring criteria, skill building tips. Now we're going to look at how questions are structured. Question four. Read a passage, listen to lecture, 30 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. Here's generally what the question will look like and how they're structured. In question four, you will read a passage about academic subject. Then you will listen to part of a lecture on the same subject. You'll have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Question six. Listen to lecture, 20 seconds to prepare, 60 seconds to speak. For question six, you will listen to part of a lecture. Then you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Question four. For question four, the reading passage will always be about an important academic term or concept that may be found in a first year college textbook. Then, when you answer the question, you will speak about how the example supports or illustrates the term or concept. For question six, the listening passage is an excerpt from an academic lecture on a single topic. Usually, it starts with the professor either defining a concept or highlighting an issue. Approach tips. Take notes while listening. Write down keywords or ideas. Review notes as you prepare your response. Don't repeat yourself to fill time. Say something to clarify, develop, or elaborate. Practice timing yourself. Practice with academic text. You don't need prior knowledge of a specific fields. The questions test your English. Now, here are some tips about how to approach these kinds of speaking questions. Number one, the topics for these questions can be from a variety of fields. 
life science, social science, physical science, history, art, literature. And although it's important that you practice with academic texts, the questions are designed so that you don't need any prior knowledge in a specific field to answer the question. In other words, even though a question is about an academic topic, ultimately it is not testing your knowledge of that topic, it's testing your English. Scoring criteria, 0 to 4. A score holistically. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how the questions are scored. In the speaking section, all six responses are scored on a scale from 0 to 4. They are scored holistically, which means the raters listen to various features in your response and then give it an overall score. Scoring criteria. Delivery. Language use. Topic development. Delivery. Clear and fluid speech. Good pronunciation. Natural pace. Good intonation. Language use. Use of grammar and vocabulary to express your ideas. Topic development. How fully your answer, how clearly you express your ideas, how you connect ideas. Skill building tips. Here are some activities that can help you build your skills for the integrated speaking tasks, especially number four and six about academic courses. Develop your academic vocabulary. Keep a list of new words and practice pronouncing them. Read an article and record a summary. Transcribe the recording and think of other ways to say the same thing. Find textbooks in English that include the study questions. Practice answering the questions out loud. Collect recording of yourself in an audio journal. Ask your English teacher to evaluate the recordings. Okay. Okay, good, good. So we have the idea is similar to questions numbers three and five, right? What is the main difference that we have in questions four and six? Really, the most important difference is the fact of the variety of the listening and of the reading. In questions three and five, it's about campus life. What happens at the university, problems and solutions for, you know, things at the university. In questions four and six, it's about topics. It's academic. It's more about like a, a lecture, more of a classroom environment, social science, uh, anthropology, history, uh, physics, whatever it is. The difference is that in the listening or in the reading, you don't need to under, you don't need to know the topic because they explain to you normally they give you a definition or they give you what it is that they're talking about, okay? So if they say um, the concept of, I don't know, a, a, a mass hysteria is, and then they explain what mass hysteria is, and then they tell you a little bit about it. So what you want to do is when you're thinking about how to answer and taking notes, you want to use some of the words. If they, the main topic is mass hysteria, you use it. If the main topic is a social science, you use it and so on. Okay. So similar to questions three and five, the difference is that now it's academic and not about the life at the university. Okay. Yes, you'll probably find topics that you don't know anything about. They'll talk about things that you have no idea. You maybe you've never heard of because that's the, that's the idea. Okay, so don't worry about it. Remember, this is the most important. The most important is they are not evaluating if you know about the topic. That's not the evaluation. They are not evaluating if Mario is a, a, a scientist and Daniel is a, a psychiatrist or a sociologist, the professor. No, they're only evaluating your English. So as long as you can summarize because you understood correctly. You can explain what they said about their solutions correctly and then give your opinion. That's all. It doesn't matter if Daniel agrees. It doesn't matter if Mario disagrees. It's, that has nothing to do with it. The important is that you can speak fluidly, correctly, at a normal pace, not too fast, not too slow, without having so many pauses, without thinking about what words to use. That's why you have time to answer. And it's very important when you are listening, when you are thinking, 
you have a little piece where you can write down, you have 20 seconds, you, you can take notes, use it. Get yourself used to taking notes while listening, taking notes. You don't have to look at the spelling, only you are listening and thinking because it's going to help you when you want to speak. Okay, this point is important, this point is important. Remember, there are notes. Is not a dictation. So it's not copy word per word. It's only the main idea. Sociologists, bad, uh, if, uh, too many people. Uh, his, whatever it is, that's what you want to take notes for so that when you are speaking, you can have a good idea. The last part is try not to repeat yourself. So that means that many times when you see that you still have time and you're looking, oh my, I still have 30 seconds. Don't, no, don't repeat your answer. You already answer. Only elaborate the answer more. Give more information, uh, details, uh, examples, supporting ideas, reasons why that's correct or not correct. But don't repeat, oh, it's correct. Oh, it's correct, no. Give examples why, explain why that's going to give you more points. Is that okay? Or are there any questions for that part of the video? No, oh, Edwin, it's okay. Okay. We understand. Great. Okay. So it's actually now we're going to try it, we're going to practice it. Okay. First, we're going to practice it together. So you have an idea of how it's going to work. Don't worry, I'm going to project it on the screen. Uh, we understand already the, the instructions, right? The instructions are, you have time to read, you have time to prepare, and then you have to answer. Okay, so, so you have a better idea. Rocio, yes, you wanted to say something? Okay, no? All right, so that you have a better idea, I'm sharing my screen so that you can understand. This is for, as an example, if you had questions numbers three or five, this is similar what you would get. You would get this, you would have 45 seconds to read this, then you will have, uh, you will listen to two students discussing this reading, okay? That's, you listen only one time, you don't listen two times, and then you have 30 seconds to prepare your answer. Finally, you'll be able to respond with 60 seconds. Okay. So in total, if we take a look at it, really in total, it's about two minutes and 30 seconds. You have 45 seconds here. Okay. You have the listening, whatever that is. And then you have 30 seconds and 60 seconds to answer. So here's a minute and a half. And here's almost a minute, that's two minutes, and then the listen. So you have about three minutes to do the entire exercise, okay? So before we begin, I am going to have my stopwatch because I'm going to time you exactly like if you were doing the exam. I will give you 45 seconds to read. I will play the listening one time, and then you will have the opportunity to give your answers after 30 seconds of preparing. Okay, first let's make sure it's okay. Everybody understand? Yes, okay. So as you can see, I'm going to give you exactly, exactly the time that it's like on the exam, 45 seconds. I, if you finish reading, you finish reading. You don't finish reading, too bad. Then we go to the listening exactly one time. I. Continue the timer, you have 30 seconds to prepare, and then boom, 60 seconds to answer. Now remember, if you are not used to taking notes, which most people in El Salvador are not used to, mm, it's a good time to practice. <laughs> it's a good time to start learning to take notes. That way you can take notes from your reading, you can take notes from your listening. That way for you, you have some basis of what you want to say. Okay, before we begin, any questions? All right, here we go. 45 seconds. Go.
Are you going to join our protest to stop their tearing down Old Main? You aren't marching about that, are you? We need a fine arts complex. I don't disagree with that, but the empty lot behind the sports arena could be used. Well, that's true, but it's a long distance to walk. So, what's so special about Old Main anyway? Well, Old Main was the first building, actually the only building, on campus in the early days, so it has historical value. We should try to preserve our heritage. You know, that it was built in the mid-1800s of stone, so built to last. I didn't know it was that old. But it doesn't have space for classrooms, and I imagine it's a huge expense to heat in winter. Well, in fact, those heavy walls keep heat in, so it isn't expensive. They could use it for offices. There's a shortage of offices for graduate students who have teaching assistantships. Okay, that is the time. Please use your cell phone, your WhatsApp, and record your answer with 60 seconds. That way is the same for everyone. Nobody is having more time to think. Nobody has more time to cheat, to prepare their answer. No. Everybody, use the WhatsApp. You have 60 seconds in the WhatsApp. Record your answer and send. Just now, teacher. Just now, Irene. Just now. In the WhatsApp, Irene. Okay. We have to send the audio from the WhatsApp group, right? Okay. Do you receive? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's okay, but let's go ahead. <laughs> Okay, everybody should be ready, sent it, no more time, no time to erase, record, erase, no, 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 one time, that's it. Okay, Daniela received yours, Mario, I received yours, okay. You can go ahead and listen to your own, again, Mario, you can listen and identify what you need to improve, Daniela as well, so you can hear, and when you listen, then you say, ah, oh, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, Rocio, Veronica, Irene, send your audio.
No, yet, teacher. Yeah, but you only have 60 seconds. You don't have three minutes on the exam, only 60 seconds. Yes, but I don't catch up that story. Okay, well, we're gonna continue. But then you see that's that's an issue. If you are taking a long time to to think and send and think about the answers, that that's also going to affect you because the time would have already finished and ran out, okay? So that's the idea. Uh, you have that same type of listening, reading um, and speaking, you need to start getting used to, okay? So the same thing when we talk or something, look look at the stopwatch, look at your time and say, okay, I have 60 seconds for my answers. I need to prepare, I need to think about it, okay? So what we're going to do is we, we only have um, a few more minutes, but we have time to do the next one. We have time to do number two, okay? So already we are into the next exercise. So send your audio quickly because here we go, number two. Now listen to two students as they discuss the announcement. Hey, Sue. Want to go for a coffee? No, thanks. I'm going to the talk about restless leg syndrome. Why don't you join me? Never heard of it. So what's your interest? Well, my mom suffered from it since she was a teenager. At that time, it was diagnosed as growing pains, later as a strained muscle. And then when she began teaching, she was told it was because she was on her feet all day. After she was told it was all in her head, she quit asking and just went on suffering. That sounds awful. So, uh, why were the doctors so wrong? Well, she's always described the pain as thousands of microscopic creatures eating away her calf muscles. That's weird. So how did she finally find out what it was? Oh, a cousin mentioned in passing the medicine that she was taking for restless leg syndrome and went on to describe what mom had been suffering for over 30 years. Wow. Yeah, she's on medication now, but I want to know more about it. It runs in families. So you might get it. Maybe, but I haven't had any problems yet. Uh, okay. We had to send another voice. Now you have exactly. Okay. Now you okay. have sixty seconds. Send the other voice.
TOEFL exam is difficult. Yes, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, Veronica, is yours the the one that says Auditoria, IMSC? Yes, teacher. Because I have problem with my computer. Okay, no problem, no problem. Just making sure because it just says auditoria, so I don't know who who auditoria is. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to renumber it. There. No problem, no problem. Okay, great. Well, uh, don't worry. As you can see, this the even the speaking part is not easy. It's not like a, it's not talking to your friends. It's very specific. Is is hard. You have a you have to think about the words that you say. And many of you, we need to increase the time that you speak. Some of you only a few seconds, some of you 30 seconds. The better is trying to get 50 or more seconds. Okay. That's good because that's, that's close to the minute. So if you're around 50 or more, it's okay. You don't lose points for, for, for this part. But if you have only 20 seconds, 30 seconds, oh, uh, it's, it's very bad because they, you, don't, you don't explain all of the points. Remember, the points are first paraphrase what you read, paraphrase what you, under, what you heard from the listening, explain why that opinion is correct or incorrect, in, and then why for you, okay? So you have a couple of them. You need to paraphrase the reading, paraphrase the listening, explain the solution or explain what is the, the possible solutions and why for you that's a correct way to do it or not a correct way to do the things, okay? And what do you think about it? Any questions about it, Mario? Yeah, we had to say all, all that you actually said in the, in the audio for yes. an answer from the, ah, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have zero in the, in the test. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. You have to explain all this. Uh. Ah, yeah. yeah. So you have to say, okay. Uh, there in the reading, they're describing uh, about uh, the house uh, or uh, a building being torn down or a building mm -hmm. being destroyed. If you remember mm -hmm. what Irene asked, what happens if you don't remember the word? Use other words. Don't mm -hmm. don't think about I I the the word para uh, uh, botar botar like, no. <laughs> No, you mm -hmm. don't think about mm -hmm. it. Okay. Destroy. I don't know another word. So I, they destroy the building and it's okay. It's the same idea, right? The important is mm -hmm. because remember, fluency are points. Intonation are points. Vocabulary are points. So when you pause and you say, um, well, you are in this moment, deduce points, reduce points, deduction, mm -hmm. limit, and then every time is, is points. Okay. So don't worry, we're gonna to continue tomorrow. As you can see, even the speaking part is not, it's not so easy only speaking. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't worry. If you want to practice, you know what to do. 60 seconds, listen to yourself and try it. Okay. All right, guys, okay. have a good night and Thank I'll see you, you tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. See you. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening.